All right, today I'm gonna to use this MPP solar all-in-one charger and inverter and this Power Queen 12 volt, 100 amp battery to build a solar generator. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mount the battery uh, terminal cables to these two terminal posts. This is the negative and this is the positive. So that this should be fairly straightforward. All I really have to do is mount the battery cables, the solar panel cables, which I got right here, and I'll, I'll put links to all this in the description. The, for the MC4 connectors, you don't have to use MC4. You could use XT60 or, or XT90 or whatever you wanted to use for this. This is, I saw these on Amazon and I thought oh, that would be perfect. And then the other thing I have to do is I have to cut a, I'm going to cut a power strip. You could just use a single um, power cable. I'm just going to cut a power strip, cut the uh, plug end off of it and wire it into this so that I'll have four power receptacles on here. You wouldn't have to do that. You could just take a standard extension cable and, and uh, cut one end of it off. Um, but I'm gonna use a power strip. All right, I'm gonna get the, the battery terminals connected and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the battery terminal cables connected. That was super easy. Um, all you would need is a 13 30 seconds socket for that. Or I guess I could have just used a Phillips head screwdriver too. Uh, either one should work. Uh, next, I'm going to install the MC4 cables, which should be super simple. So I'll do that. I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> I've got the MC4 connectors hooked up. That was pretty straightforward as it, as it looks like it would be. So next is probably actually one of the more difficult parts and that's really shouldn't even be that big of a deal. I need to take a power strip and cut the, uh, the plug off of it. And then I need to connect the three cables into the AC output which is the lower section here. There's also a AC input. If you wanted to run loads off the grid and charge the, the battery off the grid, I'm not, get, I'm not gonna do that at all. Um, I'm not gonna hook it up to uh, AC power at all, uh, but it would just be the reverse. So instead of hooking up um, a cable with a receptacle or receptacles on it, like I'm gonna do, you would just hook a cable, a, cut a cable at, with the actual AC plug connected to it and wire it into here. But like I said, I'm not gonna do that. I, I won't need that. So let me get that prepped up and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my power strip. I cut the end off of it, as you can see here. I'm gonna keep that, maybe find some use for it down the road. And I used my handy dandy wire strippers. Um, if you're curious, these cables, look, uh, they took the uh, 12, they were 12 gauge to, to um, get the ends off of them. Uh, on the, using, this, using this tool, I used the 12 gauge setting and it worked really well. So now I'm gonna wire it in. I might have to trim some of this copper off the end. I may have trimmed too much. Um, but uh, I'll test that out. Okay, I've got my power strip wired in, and I have to say so far that was definitely the most challenging part of this project, so so far anyway. Um, I will say that uh, what I've noticed is uh, about, you want to leave about one half inch of copper um, to, to really get in there, but, but not have any copper hanging out. Uh, I took a little bit of trial and error, but, uh, um, I think I got the optimal amount of copper into the receptacle with it locked down. And, and when I'm, when all is said and done, I'm actually going to reinforce this onto, um, what, where I mount, end up mounting it so that 
this isn't just held in by these screws. I'm gonna actually reinforce this. As this is the this is the main part I do not want to mess around with. Um, I want to make sure I get this completely correct because this is where all of your juice is gonna be coming out of. So okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and that actually completes the the wiring. Um, I do I haven't connected it to the battery yet, obviously. Uh, I've still got the uh, connectors without a battery connected, um, but. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. That's this piece and put the screws on. And I think the next part is gonna be hooking up the battery. Seeing if we can get, uh, get this thing programmed. Before I actually put the screws into the cover plate, I did wanna mention one thing. Um, when you're doing this, just make 100% sure that you're hooking your AC output into the lower connections, not up here. If you put, if you connect these in reverse, if you're in fact gonna use the AC input and output and you reverse them, that's gonna be very bad. You definitely do not wanna do that. So just make sure that your AC output receptacle for this is connected to the bottom if you're gonna build, if you're gonna use this unit. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Okay, I've got the battery connected and I'm ready to power on the inverter um, for a test run. I'm obviously not gonna leave this setting like this, but I wanted to test everything being wired together before I you know, put it in its final uh, state where it's gonna be. Um, I did wanna mention one trick that I had seen online um, for connecting the battery to avoid that pre-charged spark that you get. There's a capacitor, my understanding is there's a capacitor in the inverters, um, in pretty much all inverters. And when you initially connect the, the, uh, the second terminal, I don't think it matters which one you connect first or last, but the when you complete the circuit, um, it will spark. You'll get that big spark. And a lot of people will use pre-charge resistors. I don't think the value matters at all. It's just allowing the uh, capacitor and the inverter to charge uh, slowly. Um, and I saw this trick online where people were using pencils because the graphite actually acts as a pretty good uh, resistor. Uh, and so what you would do, I, I connected the negative terminal first, and obviously there was no spark. But before I connected the uh, positive connection, I just touched the positive terminal on the battery and then touched the positive cable, let that sit for just maybe three seconds to let the, the uh, resistor charge up or the capacitor charge up. And then I went ahead and connected the battery and there was zero spark. So let's go ahead and power this on. Super annoying beep. Okay. And it's showing the battery is connected. Now this still has to be programmed for the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And I apologize for this really terrible lighting. Um, I'm using like a desk lamp to light this. I apologize. I know that's terrible. Um, so anyway, I, I still need to go through and program all of this. Um, and let me do that. And then I'll go ahead and connect a load to this. I, I don't think it's really important to show the programming steps because they might be completely different for whatever battery you, you connect to this. If you use this unit, so uh, I would just look at the manual um, and it's, it's kind of boring to, to go through and, and do each one of the, the steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I will be back and we'll connect a load to this and see if it works. Okay, I've got some loads running on this. I've got this light, this little desktop light and I've got this fan running because it's Florida and it's summertime, it's hot right now, so that is feeling really nice. 
Um, just got them both plugged into this power strip that I've wired up here. I've got the inverter programmed, the charge controller and the inverter programmed. So there were three settings for the battery uh, chemistry. Uh, there was flooded, AGM, and user defined. This is lithium iron phosphate, obviously, so I did user defined. And there's a ton of settings. So what you'll need to do is get the manual that came with the battery and then the manual that came with this all-in-one inverter charger and uh, to, to get that squared away. And I just bounced back and forth between the two uh, to look at the settings. I think most of the settings were uh, for this manual were on page four. Um, they just went through the all, all the different uh, voltages and you know this the general information, that kind of thing, the disconnect voltage, things like that. Um, so you would just want to reference your your manual for whatever battery you have. But yeah, definitely you would want to have both both on on hand unless you've got the settings memorized. But that would be kind of uncommon, impressive, but uncommon. Um, but yeah, so um, it's working. Super super simple 12 volt solar generator setup. Really, just two components: uh, the battery which you know you can hook up whatever size 12 volt battery that you want and then this guy uh this has got the like i said earlier this has got the the um, mppt charge controller built in uh, i think it's a 40 amp charger i could be wrong about that you probably want to look it up it's a 1000 watt inverter um for what i'm going to use this for i usually run about 100 to maybe a little over 100 ish loads 150 uh, watt loads at a time so this is more than enough um, to run that type of, of load on it you can't run you know heat guns and hair dryers and big coffee makers and things like that on this but um, I'll put a link in the description for th all of this stuff uh, both of these components so that you can check out the prices on them as they, they fluctuate quite a bit I know that um, I bought this recently and it was on sale uh, for 425 this um, I got a really good deal because there was a coupon so I would look look on eBay if you're looking for a battery look on Amazon um, see who's got the best deal going at the time because the prices fluctuate quite a bit and the nice thing about the power queen stuff is that this literally took like four days to get, four business days to get to me. So they shipped it from California, which is awesome. So, uh, which I was impressed about that. Uh, this took uh, about the same amount of time. I think this came out of Utah. So also here in the States, but uh, yeah, this is working great. I'm gonna, you know, set it up in a, a more usable um, situation. Um, but uh, um, when I mean that, I just mean like I'm going to put this in a container and, you know, mount this on top and things like that. I don't mean usable as far as like powering stuff. But uh, yeah, so it's all set up. It took me, you know, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. I was moving very slowly. So but this is uh, really exciting. What I will do um, also is it's there's no sun out right now. It's been a really rainy day. What I will do is. I'll follow up this at the end. I'll um, I'll put some footage of this connected to solar and it charging uh, with solar, which I can't do right now, unfortunately. So uh, if you guys stand by, I will. The next thing you'll you'll see is it um, hooked up and hooked up to some solar panels and charging. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, the sun finally decided to come out. So I've got the battery in this uh, clear storage container. I've got it all wired through that. I've got the solar panel cables connected. I just used some VHB tape to stick this on the sides. It actually feels like it's working pretty good. And I am charging at almost 100 watts right now. It's not a real sunny day today. I have a 210 watt panel connected to it right now, but you know, it's not gonna get anywhere near that today. It's uh, it's in the mid afternoon and it's been very cloudy and rainy earlier. This is about the first bit of sunlight we've really gotten today. 
but yeah, this is, uh, this has been a very quick, easy and fun solar generator project. And, uh, for anyone who's thinking about getting one of these units, these all in one units and, um, putting it together, adding a battery to it and, uh, getting it all set up. I would say do it. It's super easy. It doesn't take very long at all. It's a lot of, a lot of fun too. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. Take care.